Hey, everybody. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. Uh, the second day of a wonderful conference. My name is Elad Benjamin. I'm the CEO of Zebra Medical Vision. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about um, algorithms and AI and how they can impact all of our lives uh, in, uh, in medicine. So over the last few decades, we've been expecting our physicians and our healthcare systems to become superhuman in some sense. Um, population explosion, an aging population, more and more people that are requiring healthcare services. Um, and we expect our physicians to be able to treat us for a growing number of ailments, uh, with growing number of data. And we expect our healthcare systems to evolve as well, and to be able to handle the increased amount of data inputs that are being generated on a day-to-day -day basis. And what we're seeing is that that is slowly becoming a problem. Uh, for those of you who uh, hope you don't have to, but if you go to your uh, general, uh, general physician or family practitioner, it's becoming very, very hard for them to really understand what to do with a patient that walks in the door. And they basically just try and route them to relevant people. And Overall, we're on an unsustainable course. There's two billion people joining the middle class and starting to uh, acquire uh, healthcare services. Um, there are one million papers published every year. What are the chances that a physician in a particular specialty can really be up to speed on the latest advances in technology? And so what we've seen over the last few years is increased fragmentation. There's specialization within very, very small niches. And it becomes much, much harder for someone to be able to look at a holistic view of a patient and be able to really understand what their true nature, um, what their clinical ailments uh, really are. And within medicine, which is a huge area, today I'm going to focus on one specific subsegment, which is medical imaging. All of us, I think, are familiar. Uh, CTs, X-rays, MRIs, they're done um, uh, by the billions, actually, uh, every year. And this domain is especially susceptible to the dynamics that are going on uh, in medicine today. And why? There's a global supply versus demand crisis. There's 3.6 billion scans done every year. Um, the amount of data that generated every year uh, continues to grow, and it's going to double over the next five years. And as amazing as it may sound, almost half of the world's population are living in what's called a radiology scarce zone their access to care or to a radiologist. Radiologists are the physicians that read and interpret the scans. Um, their access is either scarce or none at all. And think about that. Half of the population has a problem receiving high-quality care in this realm of medical imaging. And medical imaging is a, is a visual business. Somebody has to look at an image or a set of images and make some sort of interpretation or diagnosis. And the way this looks like today for many radiologists around the world, even where there is access, is one radiologist comes in in the morning, they have anywhere between 50 and sometimes more patients they need to see. And each of those patients has a scan associated with them that can sometimes be up to 400 different images per scan. So you do the math and you take a typical 9, 10-hour day, including some breaks, and then you realize that an average radiologist has just over a second and a half to look at each image that's presented before them. And think about that. We're depending on those radiologists to identify cancer, bleeds, um, any other chronic diseases, um, and there's a, the list of hundreds of different diagnoses. And they have literally seconds to be able to tell what's wrong across a wide variety of organs and, and, uh, and clinical conditions. And that's becoming unsustainable. So if you look at all those statistics and you think about, well, what needs to happen, the industry somehow needs to make a leap. If you calculate the amount of physicians that are needed to be trained in countries like India or China or Brazil or Malaysia or the Philippines or even in some places, in, even in the central U.S. where we think there is access, um, it's just impossible to physically train the amount of people and spend the amount of time that's required to get enough doctors to be able to meet the demand for their services. So something else needs to happen. And in many other industries in the world, technology has come in to bridge that gap. And this is where Zebra comes in. We founded Zebra 
um, almost four years ago, and we founded it with a mission to enable quality care to millions of people globally, and we said we would do that by teaching a computer how to automatically read and analyze medical imaging data. Um, and it's an ambitious goal, but it's one that we've been working towards uh, over, the last, uh, over the last few years. And how are we doing it? You've been talking about AI for the last day and a half. I'm going to spend two minutes just talking specifically about what we do. We use technology called convolutional neural networks or deep learning. I know it's a mouthful on the one hand. On the other hand, it's become a bit of a buzzword today. Everybody uses deep learning. Uh, but I want to talk about specifically what we do. These tools uh, have revolutionized multiple industries uh, already, uh, and specifically image recognition, which is essentially what radiology is. A radiologist needs to look at a set of images, and they have a mental model in their head of what we're supposed to look like on the inside, and they compare that mental model to what they're looking at on the screen. And if there's discrepancies, they can uh, diagnose a, a disease or, a, or, an, or an ailment. And in the world of deep learning, um, a few years ago, uh, architecture started to form that basically started to teach computers how to identify objects. And the example, or the way I like to describe it without any mathematics at all, is how do we teach uh, a toddler to, to recognize objects? You know, my, uh, my two-year-old, um, when we want to teach him something, you say, you know, that's a cat, or that's a dog, or that's a car. And after enough times of repetition, our brain is able to understand and extrapolate. And from that point on, there's a certain moment in time when we know it's different size cats or different colors or different shapes. We still know. And deep neural networks rely on the same principle. It's basically taking millions of images, labeling them like the labels you see in these images behind me, and teaching a computer what a helmet looks like or what a bird looks like and thousands and thousands of these categories across millions of images. And about 10 years ago, there was a project that was started at Stanford University called ImageNet. And it's become one of the largest nonprofit collaborative projects globally. You can all go to imagenet.org, and you receive an image, and you're asked to give it labels to actually help the computer uh, understand what this image includes. And to date, there's 14 million of these images in that database, and they contain 20,000 different categories of objects. And why is that important? What has it done to the image recognition industry over the last few years? So a few years ago, all the big tech giants started to have a competition. They said, all right, let's see who has the best image recognition engine. And you can see that over the last five years, uh, the big companies, and today Google's in the lead, have reached a point where if you snap a photo with any one of your photos and you upload it to the Google uh, image recognition engine, that picture uh, will be able to be described with approximately 97% accuracy. That's almost like a human level recognition. And that's a revolution. Um, and if any of you, you have used some of Google's tools like Picasa or others, uh, you can sense the power that's behind it, how they can recognize family members, they can recognize locations, uh, and, many other, uh, and many other objects. And what Zebra decided to do about three and a half years ago was take this concept of deep learning and use it in healthcare. The problem in healthcare is that it's very hard to get your hands on high quality data, large amounts of high quality data. And one of the first things that Zebra did was reach a number of partnerships with hospitals that allowed us to create the largest anonymized patient database globally. We have 13 million scans over half a billion images. And this is our equivalent of the ImageNet that I just showed you. We are using this massive database of uh, patient data. Uh, it's all anonymous in order to create uh, a virtual radiologist. And what does it look like? These are just three examples out of many. Uh, we've built what we call a radiology assistant. Radiologists, they often sit in a back room in a hospital. It's slightly dark. They sit in front of a few high-resolution monitors, and they look at scans over and over and over again. And what we've done was create a tool um, that as they read a scan, we pop up our little assistant that tells them what we have analyzed for this 
uh, for this scan. And we know how to automatically search for things like brain bleeds or lung cancer or breast cancer or compression fractures in the spine or people that are at high risk of a heart attack or stroke because they have coronary disease or hypertension. Um, some of the things that are responsible for uh, the most mortality uh, per capita in, uh, in, in the world. And as we continue to analyze more and more data, our ability to accurately diagnose and predict these findings gets better and better and better with, uh, uh, with, every, uh, with every scan. Um, so far, uh, we've deployed um, our assistant or our product um, across uh, over 50 or 60 hospitals. We've analyzed over a million patients so far, and this keeps growing and allowing us to, to improve. Um, we're on a mission right now um, to basically take what a radiologist does and be able to provide an insight for every single scan. This is a, a very ambitious goal because there's hundreds and hundreds of different things that physicians can say. And right now, our pipeline is comprised of data from CTs, x-rays, and mammograms, which cover about one out of every two exams done globally. Um, and over the next 18 to 24 months, that's the impact that we would like to have, is uh, for hundreds of millions of patients that receive chest x-rays and don't even have access to a radiologist to be able to read them, we will be able to provide that initial diagnosis, um, as, well as, uh, as well as other scans. Um, but Besides the technology, that's not enough. When we founded the company, if you remember our mission, we said we wanted to provide uh, timely and quality access to everyone. We wanted access. Um, and as we started uh, going to market, you first go, most companies go to developed countries. You go to the US, you go to Europe. Um, that's where most companies usually start, but that's not where the real problem lies many times. And so when we started, we said, well, we want to be able to really provide access to everybody, and how can we do that? And so actually today, we're using this uh, great forum to announce AI1, which is a complete break from any other business model that has been had so far in this industry. We're offering our entire analytics engine at a dollar a scan, global flat fee for everybody. And we believe that by doing so, we can really make the impact that we wanted to make when we started the company. Anywhere in the world, no matter how many insights we provide, uh, whether it's one, 10, or 200, uh, it'll be at a flat, transparent dollar per scan. And as we have verbalized this solution, uh, suddenly we've had hospitals in India and in China and in Malaysia and in Kuala Lumpur and in other places that have suddenly said, wow, we can afford that as well. Um, and we're starting to realize um, that uh, if you build the technology that allows you to make a leap, and if you make it as accessible, now we're starting to really realize what we wanted to, and that is to really make it uh, affordable and accessible at a high quality for everybody. And so as we continue with our mission, um, Zebra has uh, ambitious goals in terms of being able to truly revolutionize the medical industry. Uh, it's true that we're touching today upon one aspect of it, but if you think about it, um, a lot of our medicine is visual, uh, whether it's um, skin, dermatology, or ophthalmology, the, the study of, uh, of eye disease, or cardiology, the study of your heart, many, many, many aspects of uh, medicine are visual in nature. And although we have started in radiology, we, uh, our goal is to expand and ultimately be an engine that can provide this level of high-quality accessible care globally um, at, um, at an affordable price for everyone. So I want to thank you very much for your uh, patience, and thanks for, uh, thanks for having me here.